So for insight on the G20 summit, I'm joined by Jeff Moon, who's the president of China Moon Strategies. Jeff, good to see you. I haven't seen you in a while. Everything all right? Good to see you. Yeah, I mean, first question has to be, you know, this G20 summit was uh, in India. They made a really big deal of it. What were the atmospherics? And do you think they lived up to the hype, at least domestically, it was portrayed as in India? Well, the most important thing to remember about the atmospherics is that this is a consensus organization. Right. So everyone agrees or nobody agrees. And not, and not everybody gets everything that they want. The atmosphere has frequently reflected the times. You know, in 2009, it was the Asian financial crisis. In 2008, the global financial crisis. This time around, there were several different themes that were important. One was Ukraine um, and how Russia would be addressed and statements right. on Ukraine. Another was the Global South, giving increased attention and, and resources to the Global South. And then there were also interpersonal differences between some of the leaders. Both India and China aspire to be the leader of the Global South, and they, their relations are a bit tense due to global territorial disputes. There was even, um, you know, there are tensions between the U.S. and China, and I think people were surprised that China didn't want to include in the final statement a reference to the U.S. hosting the G20 in 2026. Yeah. So there are a variety of plots and subplots I'm going around. But in the end, um, they did manage to arrive at a statement, and that's a very positive outcome. Well, any statement in any international forum, as I've learned as covering diplomacy the last 25 years, is a success. Uh, but um, first, let's just break it down. The Ukraine statement was much weaker. It was that basically U.S giving way to host India, who, let's face it, has uh, been very neutral about this, close ties with Russia, uh, and basically saying, OK, in, in, the, in the benefit of consensus and wanting closer ties with India, we're going to give a pass. Well, again, it's a consensus organization. I think that the lesson here is that you probably can't let the perfect be the enemy of the good. Yeah. Um, Ukraine so, says you know, it's not I'm, good, though. It's really interesting. I mean, they were like, this is... This is not good. And it's really well, interesting at this pivotal moment that the US would seem to be happy to a dilution of language because it wants to please, uh, on a more strategic level, obviously, India. It just really struck me as like, man, they shrugged. But this is the sort of thing they fight tooth and nail for every diplomatic summit at the moment. And they kind of went, man. Well, for Ukraine, remember, they're not a member of the G20. And there's only one issue for Ukraine. and they justifiably can't understand why countries that say they support mutual respect and peaceful coexistence right. not only can't condemn Russia, but actually support it. And then, as you in, um, implied, there are, are several themes here. One is the Russian invasion. Another is promoting the G20 as a venue for informal dialogue on economic and financial issues. Never before have they not been able to reach a final right. statement. So I think they wanted to do that. And then, as you suggested, I think there was a desire to support Prime Minister Modi yeah. um, and to support him as a leader okay. of the Global South. And India did a lot of work. OK, we only got about group. a minute left. So um, I want to bring up the African Union inclusion. That's pretty interesting. It's going to change the dynamic a lot more going forward. G21, or do we call it G, was it uh, uh, 79 now or something? <laughs> Maybe maybe G20 plus or something. I don't know. But I think it is important. It's a, it's a signal that the G20 wants to be inclusive. It wants to bring in all views. I think that one of the major issues in Africa is debt um, and infrastructure that they can't pay for. Right. And how do we deal with that? I think that those are themes that will get more attention in the coming years due to the inclusion of the AU. Uh, under the headline of boring but important, this uh, idea of World Bank reform and the institutions around it in terms of increasing de uh, uh, monies available to uh, middle and low income countries while not altering the balance of power so the US keeps its veto, seen a very delicate dance. Is that going to actually happen? The World Bank head was actually there and prominent in the, in the photos and associated to the summit. And I think that this is all part of the emphasis on the global south. Yes, I think there will be more money. There will be more emphasis on financing climate change and green interests, um, I think. And there may be some unilateral, multilateral efforts. The U.S. announced a plan to support the mobilization of $200 billion in new financing. So there could be other efforts along those lines. So this is part of pressuring... I think the G20 to get to the right result. Yeah, we'll see. Um, still ahead. Thanks so much, Jeff.